Hello, and welcome to Lopes on Movies. My name is Joey, and I am joined by Connor. Hey, Joey. And I am joined by Mark. Hello. What's up, fellas? How you doing? We're back. Oh, yeah. Almost We're back. Thanksgiving. Woo. Yeah, I guess we haven't really have... been gone for for that long no. or at all. No, but... we've been we, a week, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works. Yep, that's how a <laughs> weekly show works. This is a weekly show, yes. Um, but, I mean, it's exciting to be, to be back regardless, recording a new episode. It's always fun to get to talk about movies. You know what I mean? Don't you guys mm-hmm. love talking about movies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. The only sad thing is that, you know, we, we really, I really want to talk about movie news lately you know i want to i want to see what's going on in movies and the answer is just mm-hmm. nothing again yeah you know it's been yeah. weeks and there's just no real interesting uh movie news scenarios the only thing i can think off the top of my head is that dumb best movie of all time twitter poll that <laughs> continues to to go around i don't know I, I think we're at the top four now but i didn't see is twin peaks still on it no, no twin peaks twi- i think twin peaks yeah. got eliminated by like what was it? I think it was like No Country for Old Men or yeah, something. Yeah, it was No Country. It's I like, saw oh, it go, like, come on. Yeah. You're going to do Got No bumped. Country for Old Men is going to eliminate Twin Peaks? No <laughs> that way. definitely won Best Picture before, right? What, No Country Wasn't for Old Men? Wasn't that a Best Picture winner? I th- I'm pretty yeah, sure it was. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> well, the only thing I remember about No Country for Old Men is that at, at that, that year was that movie and There Will Be Blood. Yes, and that was a yeah. That's why yeah. I remember it so well. Is because I always get those two it. movies confused, despite yeah. liking both of them quite a bit. Yeah, I <laughs> at think, least I think one years. movie is much better than the other. <laughs> I don't know. I like them both. Really, I think there will be blood. Is like you know that that's a, that's a that's a film with yeah. a capital F. And Did no I ever talk about how I saw movie. there will be blood back when uh, the New York Philharmonic used to do like a, a a show where they would play the entire score of a film and then ha- they'd have a screen playing the film. Like I went to There Will Be Blood when they did that. That's did cool. I ever talk the about Johnny, that? Was, that was so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was him. Johnny Greenwood was at there, or no, no, no. But they they did oh, his entire score though. They had the, that's in, cool. the entire. They had a huge orchestra of every you know every instrument, and uh, it was awesome to like watch them. Yeah, you know, he's yeah, fantastic. It, he does surprisingly, um, almost throwback kind of scores. It's not what you would expect from the guitarist of Radiohead. I would have to say. <laughs> It's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, people seem to really like his uh, Phantom Thread music, mm-hmm. which is pretty. That's very fan. old Hollywood, in my too. opinion. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I think uh, you know he, he's definitely got a legion of of fans out there, and I definitely. Would I saw some personal movie that. news for you, Joey. That that. Uh, oh that man! You, you just got the uh, the Irishman from the the Criterion Collections like Blu Ray. Copy right. <laughs> that, that's pretty. That's I guess you could it's too bad Kyle's news. not here, so we could not we couldn't do our. Our weekly Irishman bit yeah. about how he'll never watch it because it's too know? long. You know, I can't believe he hasn't watched it yet. He could watch it in ten minute chunks over a week or a month. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard to watch a movie that you know you have to like take multiple days. They to have watch. to pay attention to. <laughs> well, you know that's the other question. <laughs> but uh, now the Irishman is such a great movie. I can't wait to watch it again and watch it on that uh, that nice Criterion Blu-ray with all the special features. Man. Wonderful. I wonder if there's a commentary track on it. I don't know, actually. That'd be pretty cool, too. I did see the... I, I, I read the back of it uh, from from what you had when I saw it from you. It, it did, did say that there was some kind of director-approved, like, two-hour special features thing, so... Like, that just sounds I don't nice. know if... Yeah, I don't know if that's a commentary track, but that would be something if there was a commentary track for all of that. Wouldn't all that be crazy? <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? Yeah, I don't know if there is. That, that seems, like, too good to be true. Mm-hmm. I feel like commentary tracks get a bad rap, Com- like special I features in general. Too many, but they're yeah, good. It, like it, I don't know, man. Like there, there are times where like I would go through like the Kurosawa catalog, and like there's just like commentaries from just like film historians and people that. Well, know that's about really them. cool. And it's just yeah. like it's just great. Yeah. Like you learn so much interesting stuff. Like I would I would watch like a whole you know two hour movie and then watch it again with the commentary track and it'd be like oh man. This is it's almost like amazing. a running documentary. Yeah, it exactly. turns the movie into something completely different. Yeah, it's exactly I, what it is. I, I don't watch too many of them, though. Usually it's like I have to have watched it two or three times beforehand before mm-hmm. wanting to watch a commentary track. No, I understand. I understand. But there's, there's so, much, so much wonderful stuff to learn from, uh, from commentary tracks. Actually, Very to that cool. point, um, so the, the movie we're going to talk about today, unless you guys have anything you want to mention before we get to the movie we're going to talk about today, 
No. I guess not. <laughs> Nothing exciting you that you want to You know what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the monolith. Can you just like quickly but... explain what the monolith is? So I don't know what exactly happened, but apparently a bunch of like surveyors that were supposed to be like counting rams or something in the middle of the Utah desert uh, just kind of ran across a monolith, like a 2001 big rectangular metallic monolith just jutting out of the ground. It looks very, very much like the monkey monolith from the beginning of 2001 a space odyssey even down to the location like it's just jutting out of the ground in the middle of this like ravine with just all these red rocks all around and nobody knows what it is i mean it's it's obviously aliens right i mean but, i think yeah, it's confirmed I mean, uh, at this point yeah <laughs> it's really funny because they walk up and they're just like what the heck is this thing <laughs> <laughs> the voices make it that video is just so great you're like what is Highly, this yeah <laughs> oh, oh, jeez who did this this is so they weird they don't seem like angry about it or anything no they're, they're just, just like, like cracking up yeah. yeah i love yeah. it well worth but looking i mean obviously up. they did it that way because they want to you know now that it's out there yeah, they, they want need... to cover it up. Right, exactly. <laughs> so because they want to make it clear, like, this is a joke. But really, yeah. all of us smart people, we know. We know. Oh, this well, is, I have to say, is... it isn't screaming in the video. So that's a pretty big, like, <laughs> negative. But, you know, whatever. I love that um... this is what passes for movie news in, <laughs> in November 2020. A monolith in the Utah desert. There's a monolith. Well, obviously, it's actually like a 2001 reference, right? So that's kind of cool. Yeah, Somebody maybe. just dragged like a two ton piece of metal into the middle of the desert just for a dumb joke. That'd be pretty that's awesome. That's kind of awesome. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> it is pretty great. I mean, I mean, that, that's what, but obviously. <laughs> all right. Yeah. But, but aliens, really. Yeah. Aliens. We all know there's aliens. Um, that, that's been proven by science this year yeah um actually maybe <laughs> maybe it hasn't been proven by science science actually suggests <laughs> that there may be aliens but they're also like this is a whole great filter concept which suggests that you know maybe you could look into the fermi paradox yeah, that's fun yeah. anyway the you know what isn't aliens <laughs> birds they're actually dinosaurs <laughs> yeah birds are dinosaurs technically this is a, a prequel to jurassic park oh so very interesting yeah. look at that yeah, look at that stuff. good stuff so we're going to talk about The Birds today, which is uh, the classic Alfred Hitchcock movie from 1963. Um, apparently, according to, to Letterboxd, it's like in the top five most popular Alfred Hitchcock movies. And I'm not going to say that surprised me, because I, I mean, that kind of makes sense, I guess. But I like have seen a lot of Hitchcock movies, but this one I just hadn't. Um, it's kind of interesting, though. It didn't do... Well, actually, okay, I don't know if the box office numbers are ever, like, inflation-adjusted, but it doesn't seem to have done that well at the box office, even for this time. Yeah, I'm sure it did fine. Like, I mean, any, every Hitchcock movie was a success for the most part. I don't think it really had any okay. out-and-out failures. Um, but, uh, yeah, The Birds is pretty pretty widely regarded as a very influential movie. Um, and certainly, there's there's a lot in it that you know on, on the surface you can see why but mm -hmm. i i thought it was it would be an interesting one to look at and as 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 always you know alfred hitchcock movies have something about them that just kind of sticks in your brain after you watch it that uh that makes it interesting to talk about i think so the birds concept is simple a uh woman goes to this what is the place it's a uh, bodega bay yeah. yes and She's going there to basically play a prank on this guy that she meets um, earlier in San Francisco, I think. And mm -hmm. once she gets there, she kind of gets roped into staying for a little while. And coincidentally, at the same time, there start to be these very violent bird attacks happening in the area that eventually mm -hmm. escalate into some uh, pretty wild stuff, to yes, put it plainly. Yes. Um, so that's like your basic premise. The birds, guys. Let's talk about the birds. What do you think of the birds? So I don't, I, obviously it's billed as a horror movie. I'm going to come out and say it. I don't think anybody from nowadays is going to be scared of the birds, but it's interesting to see as somebody who's a horror fan, mm -hmm. like what would be considered horror, horror like back in the 60s actually, which is kind of crazy, like looking back that far. Mm -hmm. Usually they don't age well in general over that long of a period of time but there are some parts of this that are actually pretty impactful 
even like there's there's a couple of parts where the, the you can see why this had such an effect on people mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um especially the very first death scene, I think oh, yeah. is probably the most out of anything in the movie because it's very up in your face with with just straight up gore, which mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised to see in a movie like this. Yeah, it's just um, surprisingly violent looking. Yeah. The the special effects are charming for the most part. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is probably like probably considered a special effects ext extravaganza for the time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and they're they're fun to watch. They're mm -hmm. they're definitely the highlight of the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of surprised at how not I guess it is somewhat standard, but it probably influenced a lot of movies that came afterwards. The the progression of the story was. Um, insofar as like a a horror plot is concerned, mm -hmm. the the escalation is very um, the the beats are are normal, but they're very well like mm -hmm. they they nail them. You know? Yeah, there's an interesting um, uh, sort of story that uh, so I've been reading the uh, the famous interview series Hitchcock Truffaut, which the you know director Francois Truffaut did with. Hitchcock to where he basically like asked Hitchcock questions about every single one of his movies over a period of you know however many years and uh, just reading about the birds and what Hitchcock says about the birds um, there's there's a lot of moments before like the most extreme bird attacks where the movie is basically setting up these characters and their relationships right and mm -hmm. at the at the end of a scene there'll be something that makes you think about birds right. Like there's there's a scene with uh, Melanie, the main character, and the teacher in her house. And at the end of that scene, there's a bird that hits the door, um, like just like flew like violently into her front door, right? And they're they're questioning why that must might, might have happened. There's a scene earlier than that where like a bird just kind of lightly attacks Melanie when she's on a boat. Um, and Hitchcock put it this way, where it's like, you know, the the press is going to be telling people about this movie that there's going to be birds. So I had to include all of these things in there to let people know, don't worry, the birds are coming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I, the, yeah. I read that too, Joey. And yeah. it's because uh, I read that book is excellent, by the way. Oh, it's wonderful, I, I, I like reading the, like, after watching like the a Hitchcock movie, then reading the, like the section about each film. Yeah, it's great. And it, it's really interesting too. But so he clearly had the audience in mind, like on all of these, like, scenes oh, yeah. too because it it it's it, like I, I get the impression that the story was would have been way more character driven in the first version of like the script too and he's thinking of all this stuff that he's adding in like the scenes with the birds in almost every scene because because exactly what you were you would say like when the movie's getting getting hyped up by people it's called the birds it's all these the which at the time were incredible special effects of like bird attacks and bird scenes that all people are going to be talking about is the bird. So when you go into the movie, you're just anticipating the action to happen. Mm -hmm. So I think it was going to be much more of a character story and like a romance kind of thing that kind of took a back seat more so to like the bird scenes, which I really like the character dynamics in this one. Also, Yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's probably what interested Hitchcock more than anything. Um, I mean, I was actually yeah. kind of surprised at how much story there was to this movie. Oh, it yeah. actually felt like there was real solid character work in this, yeah. which is one thing I don't think carries to modern horror movies all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was very fascinating to see like the our main character has a lot of depth to her. Oh yeah. Like she she's pretty awesome actually. She yeah. she She's like a like she's a rich girl prankster type who's just kind of like sticking her nose in where it doesn't belong for like mm -hmm. basically just petty revenge, <laughs> which I thought was kind of fun. But it's like it's uh, petty um, revenge, but also revenge is kind of tinged with like she's interested in this guy. Yeah, so, like a little like yeah. half crush, half revenge yeah. sort of thing. But then that that guy has a relationship with his domineering mother, <laughs> which is you know, like that. I, I, Joey, standard. I said this before. This is my favorite. One of my favorite Hitchcock things is that he always has his leading men characters, and this one it's Rod Taylor, another you know charismatic like uh, leading man, which is it's a pretty standard in Hitchcock movies. That is 
you know, a, a well-dressed mama's boy who often, who oftentimes <laughs> lives with his mother, like still lives with his mother. They, like, I think he might have been like thirty something, but he looks older. I, I don't know what it yeah. is. He just like looks older too. And the fact that he like lives with his mother too still is just some, or like in part at least, like if, he always goes back to his to his mm-hmm. mother's house. Mm-hmm. I guess on weekends is what happens in this one. But this happens in so many Hitchcock movies. But yet <laughs> they're always still a ladies' man who who like yeah. knows exactly what to say, quick witted. Like uh, I remember we watched we did a we did North by Northwest, and it's it's mm-hmm. similar thing with Cary Grant and his mother. <laughs> who like <laughs> yeah. you know he's still a ladies man who always knows what to say and like it just it's a it's a really funny like dynamic that Hitchcock always has in his movies that yeah, I get a kick it makes at. you wonder about you know Hitchcock's relationship with his own mother just because of right. how many characters in Hitchcock movies how how many of those like domineering intense mothers there are it's a really fascinating uh fascinating thing I think the the <laughs> the one that sticks out to m- the most to me is in Notorious which uh we maybe should talk about it on the show sometime because Notorious, I think, is like a perfect movie. So I'm letting you guys know right now. Maybe you should consider watching Upcoming, Notorious. Upcoming, huh? Yeah, you're giving <laughs> us the uh, the reading list already. Huh? Yeah, but all right, I mean, all right. the, the reading list is like every Hitchcock movie. Yeah, we got we got a long way to go. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's just one of those those great character types that he he does so well. Yeah. Okay. Can I? So we we talked about how like the there were lots of cool special effects with with the bird scenes uh-huh. mm-hmm. in this one for the time in 1963. Sure. And I think for the, for the most part, I think they do hold up pretty well. And I think Mark, you put, you put it as charming. Yeah. Which these, I well, mean, the interesting thing yeah. with, with the, the optical effects of the time is like, you know, there, you know what it is as soon as you see it, like it doesn't, it's not mm-hmm. fooling you into, into anything. Right. And I, I always say like, whenever you're watching an old movie, like you put yourself in the mindset of the special effects of the time. But also remember that, like, when you see like a CGI bird in a like mainstream movie today, you know that's fake too, right? It's not. It's not like you're yeah. you're you're fooled by special effects generally. Even if it looks like more realistic, you tend to know it's fake. Like the Transformer, I you know it's it... not real, right? Yeah. So like to me, when whenever there's any special effects in a movie, especially an older movie, you you cut them some slack if it doesn't look a hundred percent real, because ultimately, like realism isn't necessarily the the end goal of everything anyway you know what I mean? yeah what what is the other option actually shoving hundreds of sparrows through a chimney yeah. i mean like it actually kind of makes you feel a little bit better because you know there aren't dozens and dozens of birds dying <laughs> in the scene as it's being shot although funnily um, enough there are many scenes in this that do have like hundreds of death. real birds and th- oh, those yeah, are like yeah. probably the most eerie and unsettling scenes. Those are in awesome, the movie. actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's yep. a lot of like really well trained animals in this movie. Yeah. On top of them yeah. doing a sort of um, layered effect where they have a flock of birds flying by, and it's like see through, so mm-hmm. you can see the actual scene playing behind, and it just looks like there are birds zipping yeah. around all inside or whatever. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was gonna say that that those scenes are probably the best, and there's some that are just. It, 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 just to be able to have all and all different like species of birds too mm-hmm. all yeah. in like the same area like the way that they must have i don't know joe if you have any more information on how they did this but like to have all these birds trained so well to like be in scenes where, because there's scenes where there's hundreds of birds like actual mm-hmm. birds just yeah. like s- like standing there in the scene like yeah it, it's really something to behold and it's yeah. I, now that's kind of the kind of thing that I think holds up better than even a move, any movie that would come out nowadays. Like the the mm-hmm. like I I was I was captivated by that that movie that came out last year called The Lighthouse, where there's like the seagulls are in that one, and they had I was remember watching oh, yeah. the credits of that, and there was like the credits were like so long for the seagull training teams, and there were a lot of seagulls in that movie, but this one had so many birds and different yeah. types of birds, yeah, you got like crows, you got seagulls, everywhere. you got yeah. Yeah. They easily had a whole murder of crows trained. Yeah, so it's insane, honestly. Like cool. looking at it, the uh, you, you can't even imagine how they were trained that well. Especially because like the whole the whole bit is that once once the 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 action starts to take place, it's kind of like on again, off again. Like the birds, they start like just kind of waiting to attack for a while, and then they attack. So it's like the moments when they're just waiting, you know that eventually they're gonna blow up and attack again, but. You're just yeah. sitting there well, like, looking at this army of birds 
going like at any moment these things could like yep. flare up again and kill us all and it's oh it's just great and there's that <laughs> the the best yeah. scene in the movie is when they're all in the diner arguing about how the bird or like i don't think they believe her that there mm -hmm. are birds attacking and they're kind of theorizing on what's going to happen and the world's going to be destroyed mm -hmm. by birds taking over mm -hmm. And there's a poor woman who's just trying to keep her kids eating yeah. without panicking about there being a bird attack. Yeah. And then the whole town gets set on fire yeah. by birds. And that's just yeah. wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> how great is that I scene, too? That. Because that, that's just like the like how you know that Hitchcock is such like a masterful <laughs> filmmaker, too. Because the book actually had a section about this, Joey. I think you, you might you probably remember is that mm -hmm. There were a couple of dramatic scenes that then he led into that scene that Mark's talking about in the diner that would, that it, it's kind of like you had just such a high intent, like a couple high intensity scenes, and then it kind of brings you back down. Because mm -hmm. he knows, because he, he's thinking about the audience again. He's like, you know, we just had this high intensity scene, we need to bring, bring everybody back down a bit. Mm -hmm. And then that sets you up for that next scene that, Mar that Mark brought up about the next bird attack. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's just like pacing, you know? Yeah. Like, it, it's... Because it, a, a film is about the way, like he's you're set, is setting up the emotional arc of like how you're supposed to feel, and that that yeah. that's another thing about the birds that I think works so well is the the feeling you get when you're watching, and and it, it, you know especially like right at the end, the slowly the way it mounting hits you at the end. Like, tension, and then where it kind of leaves you at the end is extremely it's, memorable. Yeah. It's that perfect ebb and flow. That yeah. final shot is amazing, yeah. by the way. That's yeah. probably the best shot in the whole movie, and and just wonderful yeah, it's, crazy. <laughs> it's so so cool um but yeah that 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 perfect ebb and flow of the pacing is very noticeable mm -hmm. and and like it just it just keeps building to higher and higher crests as the movie goes and it's just complete just masterwork obviously yeah you know it's that's awesome that's what you're gonna get with uh alfred hitchcock yeah it's it really it really does feel like there's just an endless amount of mastery to to marvel at when you're watching these these Hitchcock movies. Like my favorite scene is probably the uh when when Melanie's outside the schoolyard to warn um uh Rod Taylor's sister and the teacher about the pot potential for an incoming bird attack or at least a check on her and she's just mm -hmm. kind of like sitting outside and behind her is like this playground um while while the teacher is <laughs> this is a great moment of diegetic music cuz this movie has no like like uh background score it's the the entire thing is scored without music it's all just um sound effects and audio which for the record contributes very dramatically to the uh to the kind of eerie nature of the movie the fact that there's no music um but there's this one moment in the movie with where the like in in this scene where Melanie's waiting outside the school for this lesson to be done where the lesson is basically the teacher is leading the kids in this thoroughly irritating song <laughs> where they're all yes. it's just like it feels like it's going on forever and you hear the kids just singing the song in the background and it it, it like puts you on edge because the song is so like <laughs> grating. so grating but then like yeah. it just with 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 that in in the soundtrack we have melanie sitting on this bench waiting with this playground behind her and we basically are cutting from like melanie having a cigarette looking kind of like in, out into the distance to the playground behind her where slowly we start seeing these crows gathering on the playground right so like you know you, you'll see melanie's face looking out of the distance we'll cut to the the thing and there's like two crows there then we cut back to melody cut back to the playground and like two more crows come in right then it, it does this for a little while and then we have melanie get up to go check on the kids she turns around and there's like a million crows there right <laughs> it's like it's a hundred it, it's kind of like that monty python bit with the uh you know you know like the soldier running towards the the castle and doesn't seem like he's oh, getting yeah, any closer, yeah, yeah. and then immediately on the cut, he's right there, <laughs> right? You can use that so effectively to to do a lot of things in movies, and I feel like this is one of the things where it's like, oh, no. You know, it, it's like it, it immediately in that cut, just like the tension just skyrockets, because even though you're seeing the crows gather there, the fact that it jumps from like 10 to like a million in the space of a cut is really, really like unexpected, and uh, just just a wonderful moment. Yeah, absolutely. And that was all uh, storyboarded because Hitchcock is like a known like storyboarder who had like who he like usually he has like the whole movie like planned out way but before they they shoot anything. But 
this one is, is different in the fact that I think, Joe, you were even telling me this, that this is one of the first Hitchcock movies and maybe maybe one of the first big movies like this in general to be shot on location. Well, I too. wouldn't say it's one of the first or Hitchcock movies. First Hitchcock. Like, well, Hitchcock shoots a lot of his movies on sets and you, you, you can see that in, in you know, most of them when you watch them. But this is one where the fact that it was shot on location is really noticeable to me. Um, apparently, he also improvised some, some moments on this which is not something right, that's that what, he's, that's what I was uh, going to get into. He's, he's, yeah. he, he usually does, um, which is interesting. Yeah, he, uh, his whole thing about storyboarding is like, you know, he, he very meticulously figures out exactly what he wants from the movie and only shoots that. So whenever like a producer says, well, why, why can't we, you know, use a different angle? He's like, well, we didn't shoot a different angle. This is all we have, right? <laughs> like they don't do coverage. Like Hitchcock's not going to be shooting like scenes from multiple angles to like, you know, decide later in the editing. No, he gets, he's, he's going to shoot exactly what he wants and nobody can tell him to use something else because that's all they shot. Right? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a brilliant way for, for the director to maintain control. Very good way to put your foot down, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which makes sense too because he also was making how many movies a year? Like he'd come out with like... He'd come out with... A, was one every was like single one year, year two yeah. some... Yeah. Yeah, like... He was very pro- prolific, which was more common back then than it is now. Obviously, because you know Hitchcock was like employed by these studios to make movies. Nowadays, if somebody wants to make a movie, it's like you have to beg for money from somebody, and they're not going to give it to you because you know there's no money left over after making Ant Man and the Wasp. <laughs> um, Unless you want to make Ant Man and the Wasp. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe maybe you can make Ant Man and the Wasp too. That 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 they'll let you do that. All right, so we're... Wait, <laughs> hold on. I, I, got, I got one thing I want to say, sure. too. This movie, like, there's no reason to be afraid of birds, like, on, on oh, their yeah. own, really. But this one adds the, the terror of birds to, like, to, to, like, it makes you just uneasy. And it even has, like, that character in the one scene who's, like, who's like a, who studies birds, who's talking about how, oh, the birds will never do this <laughs> mm-hmm. or anything like that. And then when you see it in the, in the movie like this, it just, like it creates a fear of birds for you. Like I could, <laughs> yeah. I could totally understand. Like, I think like uh, Joey, our, our mom was even saying like to us, like we were like, Oh, we watched the birds. She's like, Oh, I saw that movie when I was a little girl. And I, I, I was terrified of it. I'm afraid of birds now. <laughs> yeah. I've like, heard it's, that. But I get it though. Yeah. Because like it, because think about that. Like I, I like I, I got, I, I was thinking of times where I'm on the beach and you have a million seagulls like that are like going after food. Mm-hmm. It gets a little uneasy if you, when they start to like start to walk over near you. Mm-hmm. And you just have like a hundred of them like around or like it's a little uneasy. And this movie, this could ratchets that up as they're like, you know, could they attack you? Could they attack people? I don't know. <laughs> it, it does That'd have a difficult bad. case to make. Yeah. yeah. And it, yeah. it manages to do it. I, I'd say even now you can at least understand why people would be scared of this movie, if not somewhat unsettled by yeah. it yourself. If nothing it, else, it like actually does a good job. Of yeah, it. like the the movie the, the the most unsettling parts of the movie are still unsettling. The the bird attack stuff is your mileage may vary, like depending on how how willing you are to suspend your disbelief for old school special effects. But the stuff that is eerie remains eerie and no matter what I think the character relationships and the story in general remains very compelling. So I think, you know, don't don't be afraid of of old special effects. Don't be afraid of old movies. That, that's if there's anything yeah. that uh, that I think people need to hear. Just uh, old movies are the best, man. Like they're still fun, yeah. yeah Incredibly on. charismatic characters with just excellent. Like, the dialogue is is not the focus of of what you're watching, but when it's there, it's so good, <laughs> you yeah. know. And it's just it's just used so appropriately. Yeah. I mean, what can, what can we say? Hitchcock's the master. Which is why we're going to talk about more Hitchcock movies very, very soon on this show. <laughs> maybe we'll talk about Notorious next week, just because I like that movie a lot. But maybe we won't. Maybe we'll talk about something else. Because we can do whatever we want. Because we're <laughs> in control of this show. Nobody the else. winter of Hitchcock. Nobody tells us what to do. It's a weird ending. Yeah, I don't know. I got kind of <laughs> aggressive there. Well, everybody, have a lovely morning. Um, we'll, uh, you know, see you next week. Hey. After your ultimatum, <laughs> you'd expect it to eat or else. <laughs> <laughs>